John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures, Serious Testing, Successful Hunting. It's now July 2020, and so far this year, I've tested 33 different broadheads. <laughs> Here's the leftovers of the broadheads that I've tested. It's quite a few, and these are the ones that are still in good enough shape to reuse. So with that, a lot of people have asked me for the score sheets of all the broadheads that I've tested, and I promised halfway through the year I would post a score sheet. So this video is going to serve two purposes. First, at the end of the video, I'm posting a four-page summary of the score sheets of all the heads that I've tested. And in addition to that, I've posted my top five most favorite fixed blade heads and top five favorite mechanical heads. I have a lot of heads that I wouldn't have a problem hunting with, but those are my top five in each of those classes. In addition, I've included the discount codes of certain broadheads that I especially like, and I sought out a discount code from the manufacturer, and I can share them with you so you can save some money as you purchase these broadheads. The second purpose of this video is I want to answer some of the questions I get. I get a lot of questions, and I try to answer all of them as best I can, but this video can serve as a good source source of information to be able to explain the testing that I do. First of all, in terms of my bow setup, I'm using a Bowtech SR6 set at 72 pounds, 27 inch draw. It's on the comfort setting. In terms of the arrows, I'm using Bishop FOC King arrows. They're 460 grains. And for the most part, I'm using fobs. If you haven't seen my video test of fobs versus blazers, you gotta check that out. Uh, and sometimes I already have arrows with blazers on them, so I use them as well. And then in terms of the tests themselves, here's my philosophy of the tests. I wanna do tests and provide information that can help you make a great decision about the best broadhead for you and your hunting purposes. So for that, I test for accuracy, penetration, durability, and edge retention. Those are my overall tests that I do. In terms of the accuracy, I put a balloon out at 70 yards and I see how readily I can pop the balloon at 70 yards. The balloon just adds a little visual effect. It's easier to see. And the highest score it can get is 10. That means I can just pretty much at will shoot the balloon with that broadhead. I never broadhead tune with this test. I just go out there, screw on the broadhead, and shoot, and see how closely it hits to my field points at 70 yards. In, in terms of the penetration, what I use for the penetration test is I use a combined medium to simulate an animal. And what I use first is this two one-third inch layers of rubber foam mat that simulate hide or tough tissue. And then I've got a half inch layer of MDF, that's medium density fiberboard. I like to use that rather than plywood because it's more uniform, it doesn't have the, uh, the grains. And then I have it backed up by clear ballistics ballistic gel. This is FBI grade to simulate tissue. So the combination of those it's a good representation of what may happen in an animal. I understand it's not a perfect representation. If I used animals, if I had enough animals to shoot 33 different broadheads multiple times through the animals, that would not provide any good comparative value. I do like to test broadheads in the field. I shoot a lot of animals, but for these tests, the tests have to be uniform. So you can compare one head to the next, and animals are not uniform. You may hit at a certain angle, or this animal may be a bit thicker than that animal. So animals do not provide a good test for comparative purposes. So that's what I do for the penetration. And in terms of scores of that, I just score it based on the number of inches it penetrates. And then I also have a, a number there that's called the total tissue cut. That's the inches of penetration multiplied by the cut size of the broadhead. So it tells you exactly how much tissue that broadhead has cut. And then what I do is I use a steel plate test. This is a test for blade strength and uh, the edge strength of a broadhead. I use 22 gauge steel plate. In addition to it being a good test, it also makes a nice good cutout and shows what kind of hole that broadhead makes. And the way I score it is I give two points for each shot through the steel plate where the broadhead does not experience significant damage for a maximum of five shots or 10 points. 
The other test that I do is a sharpness slash edge retention test. This is a really important one. I open up the package and first I do a push paper test to see if that broadhead can cut paper pushed perpendicularly to the broadhead readily. If it does it right away, then it gets five points. Then I take an Easton hex shaft and I stroke it over the edge of the broadhead. For whatever reason, that's a fantastic test that really reveals the heads that hold their edge versus the heads that don't hold their edge. I've tried a lot of different mediums for that. I've tried antler, I've tried elk scapula, I've tried hog skull, I've tried a tusk of a hog, I've tried steel, I've tried cardboard, I've tried wood, I've tried all kinds of different things and, and even different arrow shafts. But the hex shaft really does a great job. Sometimes after just stroking the, uh, the edge of the broadhead, broadhead one time, that, that broadhead will no longer cut paper. So if it cuts initially out of the package, it gets five points. And then for each time that I stroke an arrow over it and can still cut paper, it gets one more point for a maximum of 10 points. So that's how I do all the scoring. You can check out the sheets and compare broadhead to broadhead. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any comments. Please subscribe. I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends. The whole goal of all of this is that we can choose the best broadhead for our hunting purposes. And it's different. It's different based on your bow setup and based on the animal you're pursuing. What, I, what my philosophy is in choosing a broadhead is first of all, I want to get two holes. I want an entry hole and an exit hole. So I want to choose a broadhead that's going to give me the best chance possible to get two holes. My second consideration is the total cut size. So while I get two holes, I want the maximum tissue cut that can still get me those two holes. So I want two holes, but I want the most tissue cut. And again, that varies based on the animal. If I'm going after an elk or a moose, then I want something that's definitely gonna penetrate deeper, but it's gonna have a smaller cut size. If I'm going after a smaller animal, then I want a maximum cut size because I'm not worried about getting a pass through. Okay, so hopefully all of this data can help you choose the best broadhead for your hunting purposes. We owe it to the animals to do the research and use the best we've got to harvest that animal readily and ethically. Thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful. Good luck to you.